Hello and welcome to our number talk. Today we are looking at the expression 18 times 12. What we do in a number talk is we use mental math. That means no paper, no pencil, to try to solve an expression, and then we look at all the different ways we could have figured it out. So before we go any further, let's go ahead and do that. Pause the video, figure out 18 times 12 in your head when you have your solution, unpause it, and we will look at all of our strategies together. So the first thing we could have done is to use the distributive property, and that is our breaking apart property. And what this does is this lets us take one of our factors and break it apart into two smaller add-ins. So I'm going to take my 18, and as you can see, I'm going to just reimagine it as a 9 plus 9. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply that 12 by both of those 9s, and that just gets me smaller partial products. That's a little bit easier for me to mentally multiply. Because 9 times 12, well, that's a fact I should know. That's 108. And then I've got another 9 times 12. And that's a little bit easier than that 18 times 12, which is breaking into 9 times 12 and 9 times 12. So 108 and 108 together make 216. Hopefully, that's the answer that you got when you did it in your head. Another way we could have done it is we could have taken our 18, and instead of breaking it apart in half, 9 and 9, Let's look at it as expanded form. Place value, 10 plus 8. Now we're still going to multiply that 12 by both of those add-ins to get our partial products. So what we're going to get here is our 10 times 12. So that's easy. That's 12 with a 0, 120. And then we're going to get our 8 times 12. And that's going to once again be our 96. We got our 120 and 96, put those together and you have your 216. Now we could keep our 18 together and we could just take our 12, cut it in half into six and six. So we'll do 18 times, let's do six plus six. We're gonna distribute that 18 out to both of those add-ins to get our partial product. So really we're doing an 18 times six so let's see, 18 times 6. 8 times 6 is 48. 10 times 6 is 60. So 48 and 60, that's going to be a 108. And we're going to do the same thing for the other ones. So we still have to do a little bit of mental math to figure out 18 times 6. But that's a little bit easier. Add those two together and guess what we get? 216. That's not changing. And then we could also have done it like this. This is probably the easier way to do it if you're going to break up the 12. Break up that 12 into a 10 and a 2, because watch what happens. We're going to take our 18, distribute that out to both 10 and 2. So 18 times 10 gets us 180. That's pretty simple. And then we've got our 18 times 2, and that's easy. We're just doubling that. That's 36. And as you can see, we're going to get back up to our answer of 216. We could also use compensation. Compensation, what that does is that lets us change one of our factors just to make it a little bit easier to multiply. We're going to say, you know what, 18 is really close to 20. And if we could make this a 20 by adding 2 to that factor, well, that's, that's going to be very easy to multiply. 20 times 12, that's 2 times 12, that's 24. Add that 0, that's 240. But it's really not a 20 times 12. It's really an 18 times 12. I added two extra sets of 12, so I just got to take two sets of 12 away. So that's why we got this in gray here. So I would just take my 240, take away my 24, and we're going to come back again to our 216. Now, doubling and halving is a great strategy. As long as one of your factors is even, you can do it. So let's take our 18, and let's cut it in half. Let's say it's 9. So that's why we've got this gray box right here. We're going to get rid of half of our 18. Now, in order to keep a balanced expression, what we need to do is we need to take the other factor. Since the 18 was cut in half, we need to take our other factor and double it. So we double one. We have the other. And so now, instead of 18 times 12, we have 9 times 24, which is going to get us the same thing. And 9 times 4 is 36. 9 times 20 is 180. And so 36 and 180 gets us back to our 216. Doubling and halving also works. If we take our 18 and instead of cutting in half, we double that one. Since they're 
both factors are even, we could do it both ways here. So we're going to double our 18. We're going to make that 36. So that's why I've got two 18s, which means in order to keep a balanced expression, since I doubled my 18, I'm going to take my 12, cut it in half. So I've got a 36 times 6. That's why I've got this 6 down here in a gray box. So 6 times 6 is 36. 6 times 30 is 180. 180 and 36, you guessed it, 216. Now let's take a look at the associative property. This is our grouping property. So it lets us take three or more factors and just regroup them. So I'm going to take my 18 times 12, and I'm going to say, you know what? I want to reimagine this 18 as a 3 times 6. I'm not doing add-ins like I did with the distributive property keeping it all multiplication. So now I've got three factors, 3 times 6 times 12. So what the grouping property or the associative property lets me do is simply shift the groups. I'm going to take these parentheses and shift them over one. So you notice I've got the same three factors, 3 times 6 times 12. I'm just going to do my 6 times 12 first. So I want to do six groups of 12, 4, 5. I've got six groups of 12 right here. 6 times 12 is a basic fact. That's going to be 72. And then what I'm going to do is I've got three groups of six groups of 12 right there. So I'm just going to skip count by 72s. So I've got 144, and then I've got 216. So that's a little bit easier, just 72 three different times. We could also take our 18 times 12. And what we're going to do here is we're going to take our 12, and we're just going to look at that a slightly different way. Let's look at it as a 3 times 4. So now I've got three factors, so I can use my associative property again. 18 times 3 times 4. Let's shift those parentheses. 18 times 3. Let's make that our first group. Now, I don't really want to do 18 groups of 3. That would be a lot of groups of 3. I'd rather do 3 groups of 18. And the reason I know I can do that is because of the commutative property. That is my order property that lets me just flip the order of any factors. 18 times 3, 3 times 18, same thing. So I've got three groups of 18 times 4. And really what I want to do is I want to use the commutative property again. I want to get it to look this way. Four groups of three groups of 18. So here are my three groups of 18. 1, 2, 3. So I need three 18s. That's going to be 54. And I just need to skip count by 54 four different times because I've got four groups of three groups of 18s. That's 108, 162, and 1, or 216 is where we end up as always, as our 4 times 54. So those are just a few of the different ways that you could have solved 18 times 12. If you have another way, that's fantastic. Go ahead and drop that as a comment in the video. If you are a teacher and would like a copy of this slide deck for your own use in the classroom, you can find it on my website, 5minutemath.net.